Hey YouTubers, what's going on? It's your boy once again, RKO2582. Here's my raw review for this week of August 26, 2013. Let's not waste any time and get this raw review underway. So you had, of course, the team Triple H and the Shield, of course, being a new bodyguard for the new Corporation 2.0, as I, as everyone's been calling it, and um, it's Triple H. Of course, it brings up SummerSlam once again, saying, like, why well, I'm being a businessman. Dan Bryan saying it's best for business once again. And then he said, after that, he said he made it personal with my wife. And then here comes our champion, Randy Orton. And Triple H gives him a gift. Uh, Cadillac Escalade. Yeah. So, And then my boy, Daniel Bryan, comes out. Yeah! Yeah! And... And he was thanking everyone for, you know, for supporting him, you know, saying I'm not the prettiest, the biggest, the strongest, and all that good stuff. And and then I, I kind of laughed when um, Daniel Bryan called Randy Orton Twinkle Toes. <laughs> I, I was like, oh, man. I, 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 in my head, I was like, is Daniel Bryan talk from Avatar Last Infinite? Oh, if any of y'all got that oh, reference and this other reference I'm about to say, um, Oh, di um, Triple H was singing the uh, Disney song from Pinocchio, and he's like, "When you wish upon us," but I'm like, "Oh my God, Triple H cannot sing, and I don't think he should ever try to sing again." <laughs> yeah, it was so funny, and, and I, I, I mean, did anybody got that reference too? If you got both those references I just mentioned, God bless you, and um, oh, and of course, Dave Bryan, thanks everybody's seen it, and he's like, oh, I thank you, Triple H, because you made me feel mine. You're a sellout and with your big nose. <laughs> of course, they had to get the big nose. And he's pretty much saying, at night, champions, I'm going to rearrange the face of the WWE and stuff. So, and then Triple H makes a gauntlet, because Daniel Bryan has to face the entire shield yeah, later in the night. So, that's how we kicked off Raw. So, you had Cody Rhodes against Vaughn. Dog, go! And with Damian Sandow, your Money in the Bank um, winner is on commentary once again. And th just when the match is going on, we hear Fandango's music once again. Then we see the Miz cosplaying Fandango. God, I want to cosplay Fandango so bad. And um, and the return of Rosa Mendez. That's right, Rosa Mendez returns for the. We haven't seen her since earlier this year, and you have in cradles, one to three. Um, Cody Rose gets the win via distracted, and then a broad season. Then you have the Maddox take a page out of Taylor's book, tag team match player. And well, and then we have a tag team match. So Miz and Rose went up against Sandow and Fandango. And, um, yep, and then Fandango leaves like typical Fandango. And then the Miz hits Skull Cut for now on. Stand out for the win, so your winner's Cody Rhodes in the mid. Next, you had CM Punk against your Intercontinental Champion, Curtis Axel. On um, WWE app, said like um, the choice were either have Heyman ban or, or referee, or or he has to compete in the ring. And then pretty much we had to get Heyman in the ring. Yep, unanimous decision. And then once CM Punk takes care of Curtis Axel. For Heyman, and then um, and Heyman was trying to get away, and then all the people were saying like, "You ain't getting away," and you had to compete. And then Curtis Axel low blow CM Punk, and then the beatdown begins. And this this beatdown was actually oh man, it was hard to watch. But at the same time, Heyman sold the hell out of this. When every time he kept whipping CM Punk with the um kendo stick, he was like, "I loved you." <laughs> He's like, I need you, too. I was like, oh, my God. This is so dramatic. It's all get out. And and I, I was like, better love story than Twilight. Fact. <laughs> it was just, man, my God. And, yep, and that's, and then um, CM Punk's back was, oh, man. When they showed the footage of CM Punk back off, scratched up and stuff, I'm like, whew. Man, that was good stuff, so. The, the saga between Punk and Heyman continues, and I found out at Night Champions that they're going to have 
in elimination handicap match, you know, Heyman and Axel teaming up against CM Punk. So I'm like, I'm asking, is the Intercontinental title no lie? Because isn't it Night Champion or something? So maybe we'll find out as the weeks go by. So let's continue. So you had Natalia versus Brie Bell in the SummerSlam rematch, and it looked like it was going to be all Natalia once again. But but Brie Bella um be a distraction with the face buster wins, but that wasn't the story. After the match, the post match, and when my baby Yes, this girl here, my girl, my baby, your divas champion, came out and she gave like a her version of a pipe bomb or a pipe bomb shell in her case. And boy, she laid them divas down with that. She owned every single one of them. Group them all together and blazed them all at once. And I was just like, oh my god. I don't think any other... You know, I'm, I'm so happy AJ was the one who did because she was perfect for it. She was the perfect candidate for that. And it was just it was just beautiful. Everything she said in that promo was the fucking truth. Even though I love Told Divas, but at the same time, what she's saying is true. And I would put Natty in the category, and I guess Naomi, but the other divas, especially the damn Bellas, they, they, it was straight at them. And oh, and the Bellas, oh my God. The, the Bellas got on my damn nerves during this. It almost ruined AJ's epic pipe bombshell. And with them shout like, ah, da, 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 da. and I'm like, shut the hell up. Oh my God. Like the Bellas just, ugh, I just cannot stand them. Really? And, um, but anyway, my baby, my girl AJ, proved after this promo that why she, it, she to me, it, is my current favorite in this current era. Pretty much, it's official. She's the best in this current era. No question about it. You feel me? So you had Alberto Del Rio <sighs> went up against Rob Van Dam, and, and then um. Of course, Ricardo, of course, which I, I'm like, Ricardo, RBD, I still can't, you know, weird parent. But anyway, um, the match goes on. They say if RBD wins this match, he would be officially the new number one contender for the World Heavyweight title. And be a distraction with RBD having, um, with Ricardo having, um, distract, and then RBD gets the win. So RBD is now officially the number one contender for the World Heavyweight Championship. So at nine champions, ADR goes up against RVD, so I wonder, how, I wonder how that will turn out. Next, you have once again Christian against your WWE champion Randy Orton. And, oh, I have to say this: this was funny before the match started when Christian made that joke saying, "Oh, I know Triple H has a thing for sledgehammers, but looks like he found a new tool, huh?" And I was like, "Wow, Christian!" <laughs> uh, and yeah, I just wanted to get that out. Um, anyway, um, this was. This was good. Like, Christian Orton always have good matches. This was all right out of the most of them. And then just when it looked like Christian was going to go for the kill switch, then no surprise, Randy Orton pokes Christian out and RKO, one, two, three. Randy Orton once again beats Christian. Ugh, hurts her. But this, Daniel Bryan, of course, was like, congratulations. He's like, yeah. And then and then he turns. Then we all know that uh, since Orton got a car, it has to be destroyed, right? Well, Daniel Bryan just sprays some feet on it, saying "yes" everywhere and stuff. It was funny. He turned it into the yes delayed, and I loved it. I mean, compared um, D. Bryan's thing to Kofi Kingston's, of course, because it's totally reminded that. I have to say, Kofi Kingston was a bit better, but Daniel Bryan, you know, put his own spin on it, which was good. So there you go, and yeah. Yes! 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 Galay once again. So you had Tyus O'Neal. Millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. Went up against Jack Swagger. We the people. And he makes good work. He beats him with the clash of Tyus Finisher. One, two, three. Your winner Tyus O'Neal. And the primetime players keep on rolling. I love it. And the wives cut a promo pretty much uh, talking about, you know, Bray Wyatt's finish with Sister Abigail and just <sighs> crazy. And then, um, of course, we get to the main event. Um, Deep Bride versus The Shield and The Gauntlet. And Triple H gave a warning to all the, the superstars in the locker room saying, like, 
or if you get if you get involved, he said you can't help Dean Brown or you'll get fired on the spot and stuff. And then most of the stars like yeah, and then Renee Young man, made her look stupid and asking them questions. You know, it looked like the Miz was gonna say something. And he's like, he's like, oh yeah, oh I'm the most stupid. Like, uh, well I'm gonna say this. And then Miz backs out, and I'm like, damn, Miz of all people, you. <laughs> And then um, Daniel Bryan kicks off with Seth Rollins. I enjoyed this match. Of course, they they had a good match before many times. And I like that spot, that super German suplex. Oh, my God. That was insane. And then, oh, uh, and then um, D. Bryan wins. And then it wins, goes on to Dean Ambrose. It looked like he was going to win with the yes. Then Roman Reigns get in there. And then they start beating Daniel Bryan down. And, I mean, Big Show was actually getting some chance. And Big Show looked like he wanted to do something. And, but he couldn't. I'm like, Big Show, dude, don't you got an ironclad contract? Yes, I have to bring this up. Like, everyone's going to It's like, well, yeah, I thought he couldn't get fired unless it was men who fired him or something like that. He has an ironclad contract. And I'm like, wow. Even he couldn't do anything about it. And you knew he wanted to, but he couldn't. And then Daniel Bryan once again gets beat down by the shield. And then, of course, Randy Orton has picked the ball. And bam, RKO. Damn it. So, Corporate 2.02, 2 and Daniel Bryan's yet to get on the scoreboard. I'm worried. I'm still cheering for D. Bryan and stuff. And I'm like, ooh, see Triple H or doing a good job making me hate him like I did as a kid thus far. And The Shield, too, for joining forces with these jokers. So, overall, I, I enjoyed this week's Raw once again. It's like, yeah, now that Cena and Sheamus are out, yeah, it's breath of fresh air. You know what I'm saying? Nothing against them. I love them, but, you know. A good thing, so I can't wait for these four to six months, you know, for some good TV. Anyway, this is your boy RKL2582 signing off. Take care.